Welcome to the Season 3 premiere of History San Diego. I'm George Farrar. Previously in Season 2 of History San Diego, I talked with you about smugglers clashing with the Spanish military in the Bay, about the vastly growing United States increasingly moving westward thanks to the Louisiana Purchase, and about the rise of the newly independent nation of Mexico, which would replace Spain as a controlling force in the San Diego area. And... I profiled some of the early settlers and new sources of local power, including land grants, and admired Old Town in various on-location filmings, along with two tributes to the legacy of President John F. Kennedy, honoring his visits as a candidate and president. Now, in Season 3, we'll focus on the 1830s and the 1840s, turbulent times that will greatly affect the Native Americans, the early settlers, and create unique opportunities for the new power elite, made up of people at the right place at the right time. In 1824, the Mexican Congress passed a colonization law to give rights for settlers to take title to land within Mexico with certain restrictions to incentivize settlement. This would have incredible ramifications as the years passed, especially in the Mexican province of Tejas. We know it today as Texas. By 1830, limitations would be instituted which would attempt to impact the dynamics of power to the east of San Diego as Tejas was flooded with many new settlers from the United States. By 1833, the Mexican Congress will also pass a secularization law which will result in the breaking up of the vast properties, farms, and holdings of Catholic missions that had been established throughout Alta California. In 1834, this would begin, and though promises were made to allot land and resources from the holdings for the native population, this did not occur. This will be a dramatic change in the lives of many natives who had chosen to work in the mission system over the years after the Spanish conquest. In 1846, the holdings of the mission, later known as Rancho X Mission San Diego, were sold to a local politician, a Californio named Santiago Arguello, by Pio Pico, the last Mexican governor of Alta California, on the condition that he pay the debts of the mission, support the priests, and maintain religious services. His claim to the land would be substantiated after statehood was granted to California, by the United States. I want to take a moment to acknowledge what's going to happen, what happened ultimately with the Native Americans at this point in time in San Diego's history because there were Native Americans that decided to become involved in the Catholic Church and in the mission system and to practice, essentially practice a trade Okay, someone may get up in the morning and farm. Another may handle the animals. Another may work in a kitchen, baking. Uh, all these different tasks and jobs, components to what would make the mission system work. With, without all of this, right, these people have to find a new way. They would have to find a new way of living and working. And they're the powers that be in far away Mexico City. And of course, they're powers that be in the local area. And land is seen as the ability to grant favors, grant powers, to perpetuate relationships. And so the power of the land will be extracted with the secularization of the missions, which will ultimately result in a changing economy. There's going to be more concern on the part of labor forces. Now, the idea, of course, was that the, that the mission and the Presidio worked in tandem, the Presidio being essentially uh, the security for the area to protect the mission and the mission being able to supply the needs of the Presidio. 
But increasingly, the focus of attention, the investment in the area, would be taking place in an area we today know of as Old Town San Diego. And so, increasingly, not only in our history, but also in the telling of our stories here on our show, our focus now will go from the mission and the Presidio to the area in Old Town, San Diego, which in a matter of years will become a Pueblo, but will be faced with incredible challenges, pressures, and I look forward to bringing you these stories ahead on season three of History San Diego. Let's now take a look at our season three broadcast schedule ahead. I have a lot planned to bring you uh, for the remainder of 2023 going into 2024. We're going to be on location at various landmark profiles. I'm going to be putting together some great shows for you as we begin to learn how San Diego became a Pueblo. And we're going to take a look at San Diego in the North American context. We're going to take a look at the native people and what was going on in the 1830s. There's a lot of there are a lot of things that are going to happen. Uh, and so in the 1830s and 1840s, as I mentioned earlier, these are very turbulent times. So I want to take the time to go through methodically and tell the stories that need to be told and show out there to you the best of what I can show you. So I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe and join us at History San Diego and History California on Facebook groups for even more. Stay tuned. All our shows are at theleftturnnetwork.com. Take it easy. See you later.